Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Holo Project. We're gonna do some tinkering today. <clears throat> and I'm gonna see if I can help a couple of you fellers out along the way. So, as you know, probably, that the fuel pump in this here Cadillac is inoperable. And to find a rebuild kit for it, well, you can find them. <clears throat> They're not cheap. 100 bucks, 120 bucks. So I did a little digging and a little research and I came across a pump on O'Reilly's website. And it says on their website that it will not work for this car. However, I believe that it will. So I'm gonna be the guinea pig. And if it works, then hey, maybe it'll help one of you other guys out that's working on a Cadillac 390 or any of the variations of it, I suppose. So what I picked up, it's a precision part number M22007. And it specifically said when I put vehicle specific on, on the website that it would not fit. <clears throat> but in comparing it with any of the other ones that I found, gaskets and all that looked exactly the same. So this is a 35 gallon per minute flow. I think that's what it said, something like that. And if you go on Caddy Daddy's website, these are like $400. Looks exactly the same as this, with the same flow rating. The nipples, it's got a return and an outlet. Just like what we've got here. <clears throat> and they're even orientated the correct way, as you'll see here. So basically we just gotta take the nipples out of this old one, thread them into here, and bolt this thing on. And it should work, theoretically. So we're gonna be the guinea pig here and try it out. But first, we have to unrig un our rigged rigged fuel system here. So cut that zip tie off of there and take our fuel line off. Dump a bunch of fuel everywhere probably. Use my brother's favorite flathead instead of getting a socket because he loves it when I do it like this. Oh, didn't lose any fuel. Look at that. It's a Christmas miracle. And drag all this stuff up out of here. And I think what the plan of attack is gonna be First, we're gonna make sure this pump's gonna bolt up. And then, oh, I did spill a little bit, didn't I? Oh well. And then after that, we're gonna take the uh, scope and stick it down in the gas tank and see what we're, what we're working with in there. And with any luck, it'll be completely rusted out and have a bunch of crap down in there and we'll have to replace the gas tank. But if we had no luck at all, then it might be clean still. So, you know, you just never know. So we're gonna start up here anyhow. And then uh, once we get this replaced, I've got that vacuum deal that we were using on using on the brake lines and I'm just gonna run that into the tank and see if I can suck out what little bit is in there and we'll go from there oh 
hopefully we get lucky and this works out how we want it to. And then, uh, you know, maybe it'll benefit somebody else that needs to rebuild their water pump. And I know it's not going to look original, but it'd be a heck of a lot cheaper. And we're all about the cheap things around here. If and when, you know, you can find a cheaper way to do something. Set that there. I think I probably used some sort of gasket adhesive on this because I believe I've had this off a couple times and probably ripped the gasket and ran out of new ones. But you know, that's kind of the way it goes. So let's see here. It's got the flat tab, like, like so. Set that down. As long as our bolt pattern lines up, it should be all right. And that to me, looks like an exact match on the gasket. Pull that one off. The only difference would be that intersection. Let's see what we got on the pump. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that looks pretty close. I mean, there's a few differences, but you know, it's got a cavity down here on that one, and this one don't. But other than that, it looks like everything else. It looks like everything else is the same. Hmm. I mean, it fits right where it should. We're going to try it out. Go ahead and take these out. So we can throw them in our new pump. Beautiful. Clean those up, and we'll throw them in the new pump. Snug these babies down. 
I put a little bit of the uh, Permatex thread sealant on them. Should be all right. Check our gasket surface. I think that's how that one was up. Yeah. Make sure this is good and clean down here. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw the new one on. Those bolts might be too long. That, uh, <laughs> whoops. That shank must be thinner. Yeah, these are definitely shorter bolts that came with it. Hold on, project tip of the day. Use the bolts that came with it. There she is, she's bolted up. So if you're doing this and you cannot get the pump positioned where you want it, flush and the bolt holes lined up or whatever because of the rod, just turn the engine over a little bit so the rod goes, so the rod is on its way down and you'll be able to put that pump on a lot easier. All right, there she is. I left this clamp loose because I'm not in love with how this is routed. It's not touching that belt, but if you take this off and you go around the other side, how it was, then it's definitely touching the belt. And uh, I don't like that either, so I might have to shorten that hose or lengthen it to get a little bit extra out here you know so it'd be be out like that and that would give plenty of room behind it and plenty of room uh, from that belt so we'll look a little bit more into that but for now we are gonna stick the uh, scope into the gas tank and see what we're looking at. There's our poor dent. Son of a gun. 
Here's your gas door. Flip that up. Take the gas cap off. See if we can get this routed down in here. It's gotta go around a little curve. Hopefully we can get her down in there. There we go. Oh, she's nasty. Hopefully you guys can see that. But that looks to be like an awful lot of crud. In the bottom of this tank. Boy, that glare from the lights, there we go. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull this, I believe. That's pretty nasty down in there. So we're definitely gonna have to uh, look into that. Probably gonna have to pull this tank. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to clean that or not. Might just have to find a tank for it, unfortunately. It's not rusted out per se, it's just a lot of a lot of crap in there, a lot of sediment. And I don't know that I'd be able to get all that out. Hmm. Well, that sucks. Well, after looking in the tank, it's been determined by visuals that the tank needs to come down. So, now that we've got her up here, we're gonna yank that tank out of there and see if we can come up with a concoction to put in there shake it around some rocks and marbles and all the things and try to clean it out to reuse this tank because the new tanks are expensive so we're going to try to save on this one a little bit and conveniently <laughs> conveniently enough these have a drain plug in them not that there's anything probably in it but you know. Well, maybe there is a little bit. So, we'll properly, properly dispose of it in our uh, oil drainer here. That way, uh, we're not making a giant mess everywhere. There's probably not a ton in it, but whatever's in there, it ain't gonna hurt it to take it out. Yep, <clears throat> smells like varnish. There's more in there than I thought there was. That's all right, it'll make the tank lighter. I should let it pour on the ground and help clean up some of the oil stains. Greta would get pissed. night to be down here at the shop 
we got a snowstorm on its way. It's supposed to dump somewhere between zero and 12 inches on us. Nobody really knows. That's probably good enough. The rest of it can go down my arm and into my sleeve. All right, so let's get the freeze off here. Give those a spray. And those are just on swivels back there. We'll go ahead and start zipping this sucker down. Oh, hold on though. Ooh, we might get lucky. Let's go ahead and try to get this filler neck loosened up first. I've got an unhappy supervisor over here on the floor. We'll go ahead and Go ahead and fight with this here for a little bit. Anybody see anything missing? to show you what I'm doing. If that's all right with you guys. What about that? What about that hole right there? Oh, never get it back out. How's that? Can you see anything? Maybe. A little bit. Nice fit snow tonight. It's pretty, pretty slick. We haven't had uh, snow yet this year. We ride snowmobiles when we have time to, so that'd be kind of fun. We'll try to make it easy on ourselves tonight. Set her down on the training jack. Down 
goes Frazier. Now, what are we going to have the joy of disconnecting up here? Let's see. right there. I suppose while I'm in here, I could probably replace those two lines that come out of the tank there. I don't know how far up they go. It should be steel for most of it, I would think. Yep. Nope. Where'd he go? Yeah, so they go to steel. They go to steel right there. Hopefully you can see that. So I could uh, I could just replace from there to the tank. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> one's a return and one's a supply. Try not to uh, ruin these steel lines. Getting out of the tank here. Maybe I'll lower this down just a tickle. Ouch. There's one. Oh, the other one just broke. The rubber. The rubber broke. Uh oh. Alright. Now, let's see what we've got going on back here. Might be able to go down a little more with it here. These poor wires have seen a better day, that's for sure. Did they put build sheets up here on Cadillacs? If they did, I don't see one. Unfortunately. Does anybody know where they did put the build sheet in on these uh, these old caddies? I'd be interested to know. And uh, curious if maybe it's still in this car. Who knows? It'd be worth looking for though. So if you can see that sending, sending unit wire. She's in pretty rough shape. The ground seems like it's all right. But the sending unit definitely needs replaced. It looks like a rodent of some sort got in there. Or it's just old. Look at the bottom of that trunk floor. <whistles> just a beaut. God, this car is good. All right, well, I'm going to get these two wires disconnected and we'll drop this tank down. Well, there she is. Everything came apart nice. Played nice. And, uh, yeah, what kind of dig in a little bit here, see what we can come up with. She's dirty. Let me grab my oil drain pan here quick. And... We'll tip her up, see if there's anything left. Let's 
flip them this way. Must be a baffle in there or something. But either way. Put a little freeze off on those screws. And I think we will grab. What am I looking for here? What should we grab? We'll grab the old chop mat here and suck all the dirt away from that before I pull it off. a little better. Okay. How lucky can we get? Freeze off for the win. I'm telling you, it's a real thing. I'm not making it up. You've witnessed it time and time again. Well, that sock really isn't that bad. Interesting. Huh. We might be able to clean up that sock too and reuse it. Unless I can find one readily available, then, uh, then I'll replace it. But if I can't, unless we, you know, we could find a whole new sending unit. Um, but uh, we'll just see. We'll see what we find. Let me bring it down here. You guys probably can't see that very well, but there you go. Yeah, it's a little gunky in there. We'll get it cleaned up though. All right, so I think I've got some, I think I've got some of that, uh, oh, there's some evapo rust. Yeah, how about that? How about that? I think what we do is uh, just go like this and Yep. 
We'll just throw the rest of that in there. Guess it's a waiting game now. We'll let it uh, chew on that for a while. I'll probably dilute it maybe a little bit with some water. Uh, just to make sure the whole bottom of the tank is covered with evaporust. Obviously there's old gas still in there. But, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. While that sits and eats on that, I'm going to do some other stuff around the shop, put on some tunes, and uh, we'll see you when that's done eating. All right, while we're back down here, a couple days later, let this uh, evapo rust soak. Let's see what we got. Bring it down in here. Maybe. Well, that looks a little better. Probably give her another day or two. But in the meantime, uh, I checked out the sock and stuff on this and it flows freely. I kind of cleaned it up with some Berryman B12 carb cleaner and made sure that you could blow freely through the feed, through the feed tube, which we can. So we'll get the bottom side of this cleaned up. We're just gonna silicone it, just kind of how it was. Um, what else are we doing? Not a ton. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to get uh, I need to get some fuel line. Let's see what I got over here on the shelf. I think, I think this is the right stuff. There goes that, whatever it was. Let's see. Yep, that'll work. So I've got this chunk. Uh, is the other one the same size? It's smaller, the return line's smaller on the, uh, yeah, that's smaller hose. Yeah, a little bit smaller. So I'll have to get some of that hose, but we've got this for the feed line at least. We'll uh, throw that up here on our stand. And uh, what else? Oh, I'll have to take you and show you. So the other night I was talking about how it was gonna snow like a son of a gun. We got nine, 10, 12 inches, something like that. So the whole back lot back there is uh, all plowed up. And there's a couple more inches coming tonight and then another four to seven or something coming on Friday. So we've had a lot of extra work to do outside of working down here. A lot of plowing, a lot of snow removal, snow blowing, cleaning up the house, cleaning up the shop. I did sneak in a snowmobile ride last night though. Was that last night? Yeah, it was last night. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, that snow out in those fields was deep. And I didn't meet any other snowmobiles out. I saw a couple tracks, but it was snowing so hard and blowing so hard that uh, I never, you know, you went across the field and then 10 minutes later you came back and you couldn't hardly see your tracks anymore. So that was pretty fun. Just went 20 miles or so. Nice little break in on the snowmobile for the year. And that's all I got for updates for today. Um, probably go get another jug of evapo rust to throw in the tank and let it keep soaking. Try to get it as clean as we can. And then uh, throw her back in. So I'll update you as we go. All right, well, <clears throat> we're back and uh, we're gonna have a peek at this tank. It's been soaking in evapo rust for about three days. 
Let's see if we can have a look in there. It's looking pretty good. I think we could probably get away with that. So we're gonna go ahead and evacuate all that stuff out. If you do use Evaporust, save it. It's expensive. You can reuse it as many times as you want, probably. So I'm gonna evacuate it with the uh, little vacuum sucker pump some gun thing here. And we're gonna put it right back in its container and we're gonna put it on the shelf because at 30 bucks a gallon, might as well save it, you know? So let's go ahead and get this pulled out of here and uh, back in its container. And then we'll work on getting this uh, tank put back in. I don't know if you guys can hear the snowmobiles out back, but it's snowing like the Dickens out there. Slosh this around a little bit. And try to get uh, all the sediment down down in the corner. And then, with a little luck, we'll pull it all out and uh, we'll have a nice clean tank. As you can see how much we pulled out, that should be approximately what's it say here? Four liters. Yeah, whatever that amount is, probably a gallon. Yeah. So now we got that emptied out. Let's hook another eye in there quick and shouldn't look too bad. I suppose if we wanted to get real crazy, <clears throat> we could stick the garden hose on it and give it a good rinse. But uh I don't want to flash rust it because I think that evapor rust is pretty strong. And I think I left my scope up on the trunk of the Cadillac, otherwise we'd stick the scope in there and really, really get a good look at it. But let's just, you know. really don't look that bad. Yeah. It's definitely not new, but I think it'll work. Let's see if I can show you guys. We'll make it work. So anyway, the only other thing we gotta do quick. Is uh forget our light. We gotta just replace that feed line quick. So let me grab a chunk of hose and a knife and I'll swap that out quick. All right, here's our old hose. Hopefully this one's long enough. Which it appears that it'll be very close. 
let's see. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. Screw those pink style plants. Because we're not using those. Go ahead and jam this one back up in here. And we're going to go get ourselves a clamp that's uh, not from 1961. Slip that on there. Slip that on there. Get us a pertinier flathead here. And we'll be uh, smart about it and angle it back this way to where the next time I pull this tank out, it's easy. Oh, there go the snowmobiles again. We got a nice uh, blizzard warning this evening. And uh, it's been snowing for quite some time now. Let's see how we do here. Oh, let me turn that clamp down just a little bit farther. Chantel and I might go uh, for a little snowmobile ride tonight if it's not too crazy out. It might be though, because they're talking uh, 45 plus mile per hour winds, I think. Something like that. But I don't like how that's going on there. Let me screw with it for another hour. And uh, we might, we might just get her. <clears throat> that only took four and a half hours. We've already got our wire fixed up here. And I use the heat shrink butt connectors that have solder inside them. They work pretty well. I probably put a, should have put a heat shrink around the outside of that, but I didn't. What else do we gotta do? We need to get another clamp Oh, there's already a clamp on it. Well, that clamp wasn't tight, I can tell you that much. There's that clamp. There's that clamp. One of these two wasn't tight because I didn't loosen them both. And somehow. So let's see here. That's going to sit. That's going to sit up there like that. Something like that. So, all right. Well, that works. Our poor license plate light cover is broke. Uh, should we be smart and uh, clean this ground up? Yeah, I suppose we probably should. All right. Let me clean this ground up quick, and then we'll throw this tank back in. All right, our ground's all cleaned up. Let's uh, take the old broom here and let's knock a little uh, dust out of here, eh?
since it's above the tank, and we probably won't see it for another week or so, until we pull the tank back out again, because I didn't get the tank clean enough. Let's go ahead and uh, do a little housekeeping here. Let's just spray a little. Hey, look at that, there's a mud dauber. Look at that weld. Stacking dimes. We'll just do a little, just a little uh, preventative here. Might as well, it's already up here in our eyeballs. I think that's just primer, that brown. And let's see. Oh, that stuff stinks. And we'll just do this completely incorrectly since we didn't take any of the scale or anything else off. We're supposed to knock all the scale off, but yeah. She'll be alright. Alright. I think that's it. There's not a single rust hole or anything in the trunk of this car. It's incredible. Riddle me that. How does that work? How do you park a car in a field? Have it buried all the way up to the frame in dirt. And, uh, and have a nice clean frame and trunk floor. It's a mystery. Hit the other side quick. This car also has that that rubberized undercoat on all of it. My Impala has it too. I, must have been a pretty popular thing back in the day. I know a lot of guys still do it, but shoot, you look at some of these uh, Chevy, Ford, Dodge pickups, 2016s, 2017s, 18s, they're all rusted out already. Then you take a 1961 solid steel car like this. And it's beautiful. This is just primer here too. Just that brown primer stuff. Anywho, enough of me rambling. Let's throw the tank back in. How about we don't throw the tank? Yeah, too. How about we don't throw the tank back in? And we put the uh, sending unit back in the tank first. That'd probably be the smart thing to do, you suppose? All right, we got this all cleaned up nice. And I did take the tank over and hosed it out pretty good. 
<clears throat> just because when I cleaned this up, a bunch of crap went down in the tank. So, you know, we did the right thing. So we'll just run a small bead of the old RTV black. It is resistant to fuel. So that should be just fine. And then, we'll begin with the insertion. Try to be careful of our silicone. Should be fairly close like that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put our screws in. And I don't remember exactly which uh, spot the ground went, but it won't be too big of a deal. You can probably put it about anywhere and it doesn't matter. I'm gonna guess it went here. So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay. We'll take her over and put it on our tranny jack. We'll hit this wire quick with our wire wheel, make sure it's good and clean. Who knows if it's gonna work, but it's worth a shot. Put him on there. So we've got we've got the three little wire clips. So we're gonna we're gonna aim these uh, little buggers over this way. That way we can send them through the loops. Put our partially existent rubber boot back over that and then uh, we'll just run these under the clips here. Okay, there's that. Those are done, now we'll go ahead and throw her back up. I never did replace the return line. Crazy. 
Let's put our uh, Drop our nut. Grab another nut. <laughs> And we'll be good to go. So I'm going to get those, this little girl tightened up, connect the rest of it, and we'll be A-OK. -okay. All right, there she is. All back together. Post clamps are on the filler tube. Filler next bolted back up, right up there. Uh, new supply line routed up through right there and uh, <clears throat> the uh, straps are tightened up bingo well what do you say <clears throat> we throw a little gas in her and since this filler neck is tucked clear back in here We've got to do the old funnel on a hose trick. Because, you know, that's how we're going to do it. And of course, I filled this five gallon tank all the way to the top. So, I'll probably spill most of this on the ground. But we'll do our best. the old leg here as a stabilizer. That way I can spill it down my leg too. All right, well, we've got about seven gallons in it. Pull our custom hose out of there. The only thing left that we have to do is send this back up in the air and figure out a return line from the fuel line up to the uh, up to the pump. So we'll toss her back up in the air. I need to adjust this lift. Hear how far off those clicks are. I'm gonna do that quick and then we'll hook up that line. All right, well, we got our return hose on the left and it's kind of just 
shoved up there to the top side so we can deal with it when we get up there and we'll have to look at the routing make sure that it's not going to get hit by anything crazy so that's uh that's good <clears throat> and we were very unsuccessful adjusting this lift we got a little more work to do on that this side this side's loose this side's very tight but the adjuster not up there on the arm on this side is a lot looser than the one on this side so i don't know we're gonna fool around with it a little bit i don't think it helps that i've got the weight of the car on it you gotta take measurements and whatnot and go back and forth with them so anyway i'll lower this down and then uh we'll fiddle around with it a little bit more Okie dokie, well, we've got the old super sucker here hooked up to the fuel supply line. We're gonna try priming it, just uh, pulling, pull the vacuum on it. Return hose is on and looped in between the belts temporarily. We'll give her a couple pumps here, see if we can pull some fuel. There's some clean fuel at least. That stuff that was in the line was pretty nasty. So we can hook that back up. And now we know we've got fuel up here. I tell you what, I don't know where you guys are from, but uh, it has been ridiculously cold here uh, I think it's like negative 10 or 12 out today for our high so that's pretty neat not really but you know if we get really lucky I don't want to put a brand new one on yet this one's still clean so we'll uh, we'll just steal this one for now, oh, for crying out loud, is this is going to be one of those days where everything fights. You guys love watching it. I know you do. At least Don won't get any naps in if he's watching me struggle. Maybe he gets a kick out of that. Like my brother says, I'm the only one that The only one that he knows and that uses a flathead to tighten hose clamps. Okay, you guys win. I really don't like at all let me show you what's going on here okay so the hoses hook in those uh little hangers there that's where they're supposed to be and then they come up the front of the water pump and into the fuel pump well i can't figure out uh i don't remember how they were routed if they went in between these two belts or hold on I might have just got an idea be right back okay well my brain's just not functioning tonight so this car does have a return line I don't know why obviously there's no return on my carb and what I said was the return on the fuel pump 
I don't know what the heck I was thinking. That's the feed to the carb. So anyway, went and got some more line and I'm gonna take the feed line off and that line I put on this <clears throat> return that's down here. And I'm gonna plug the return and I'm going to use a different size line, the quarter inch line on the feed. And then I'll take you back in the engine bay and show you what I've got going on up there. Some days I don't, I just don't know what I'm doing. Probably most days, but you know, as long as you guys enjoy watching me do stupid stuff all the time, that's all that matters, I guess. If you guys could talk through the camera, I'd really hate to know what you'd say. <laughs> but, you know, I don't mind. Don tells us what he thinks all the time. It is what it is. We appreciate the feedback. All right, I gotta loosen that bolt. Do I have a 916 laying over here? Probably unlikely. It's probably uh, up on top. So, let me run. Uh, the reason I got more line, I'll show you here in a minute. I think I've got, I think I've got it figured out where I want to route this. And you know the strange thing is, when we got this car, it had a return hose up in the engine bay that was plugged off with a bolt. So, I don't know. I could look in the manual and uh, see if it gives me any ideas, but just go on up through there, would you? We're just, we're just, we're just gonna wing it here. <clears throat> this fuel line is flared at the end, so you gotta, you gotta jam these hoses on pretty good. Get out of here. Okay, back down she goes. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. You can see our new hose routes up and she's just flopped over here but I think what I want to do is run it up in this little hanger down here and behind the water pump like so and then put it in that way it's all behind it's behind all the belts out of the way of everything and I think that's what we're going to do. So let me go ahead and work on this. I'll bring you back and show you how I rounded it. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> it's wrapped behind the water pump. Comes up and into the pump. Fuel pump. And it's down in this little bracket down there. And then we've got our filter in line going into the carb. Bingo! That only took <clears throat> a lot longer than it should have. So now <clears throat> we're going to throw the battery post back on here. And first we're going to see if we have a fuel gauge. That'd be pretty neat. And then we're going to crank it and see if we get fuel up to the car. So let's see if we've got a fuel gauge. Awesome. We do. We have a fuel gauge. Beautiful. 
All right, now let's give her a little bit of a crank here and see if we get any fuel up here in the car. Might take a little bit to prime. I am seeing it pulse in here. Getting, uh, we're getting fuel now. It's got quite a bit of air in it though. I think what I'll do is uh, pull it off the carb and put my vacuum on it. Here, let's see if you guys can see when I crank it. A little bit of air in there. So let me try to get uh, the vacuum back on and pull some fuel up. Not sure if I'll be able to pull it through uh, the pump or not, but we'll give her a shot. I'm getting a little. We'll see if that see if that's enough to help us out a little bit here. All right, let's see what we get. Well, we're getting some, but not a ton. And I don't think I should be sucking air from anywhere. Kind of comes and goes. Let me throw her up in the air here and check our uh, our fuel supply line and make sure we don't have anything crazy going on with that. All right, let's uh, see what we got here. It doesn't appear that we're leaking anything there or there. So that's good. Maybe we just got to give her a shot in the ass and uh, let that pump really start ripping and pull some fuel. Let's try that. Let's lower her down. We'll give her a little huff with some laughing gas and then uh, maybe, that pump, maybe that pump will start pulling. Whoa. Maybe slightly excessive. Let's make sure it's uh, in park. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let freedom ring. Give her one more. Well, she was starting to pull.
She's alive, baby. Let's give her uh, give her a tickle more on the old throttle here, or on the. Beautiful. We are in business. Really nice. All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it for this one. Kind of a short one. Shorter, short-ish. Whatever you want to call it. But uh, we really do appreciate everybody watching. And uh, definitely like the comments. Um, any little tips, suggestions, or whatever, we, we definitely consider consider all comments. But uh, like Matt said in the last video, um, it'd be cool to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of uh, 24. It'd be pretty neat. But uh, yeah, we'll just kind of see how it goes. We're having fun with it. Hopefully this Cadillac uh, can come out of the cave here, you know, this spring, I don't want to get it out there now, but not with the salty roads and the snow and everything else, but uh, <clears throat> we're, we're working away. Uh, the next video, I think you guys are gonna like. It's gonna be, it's gonna be neat. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give any of it away. But anyway, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate everybody watching. And we'll see you in the next one.